True or false, you have trouble trusting. Welcome to The Whole Truth, everyone, where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and we are not skipping anything. So if that sounds good to you, make sure that you reach down and hit the little subscribe button below. But more importantly, I want you to open up your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 25. Yes, we have made it to Leviticus 25. We are so close to the end of Leviticus. It is my goal to get us all the way through Leviticus, hopefully before the end of the year. I know it's been a little bit of time since I've made one of these videos videos, but I'm back on track again. It's just, you know, in the mix of being a, a single dad and, and house projects and church and all of those things, it's just sometimes difficult to get back to these, but I really want to make it a priority, especially coming into the new year. I want to get right back into every single day, diving into God's word a little bit deeper, because I truly do believe that God's word has the answers. We just have to get into it. We've got to read it. And that's what I'm hoping to inspire you to do is to actually dive into God's word and see for yourself. And today we're going to talk about something that deals with a lot of trust. Let's read it first and then let's talk through it. Shouldn't be too long today. It's a short text, Leviticus 25. And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. A Sabbath to the Lord, you shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. What grows in its own accord of your harvest, you shall not reap, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine. For it is a year of rest for the land, and the Sabbath produce of the land shall be food for you, for you your male and female servants, your hired man and, your, and the stranger who dwells with you for your livestock and the beasts that are in your land. All its produce shall be food. That's the text. We have a year, a whole year in the ancient Israelite world is supposed to be dedicated as a time of rest. It's a Sabbath that's what the Sabbath was. We have a Sabbath that was designated for man. It's on a weekly basis. And that would mean six days that you work and on the seventh day, no work. But God called for another Sabbath, a Sabbath year. After six years of working the land, you would let that land rest for one whole year. Now, there are some interesting factors about this. Let's start with the first one. They're not in the land yet. In Moses' mind, in the people's mind, remember they're at Mount Sinai. Leviticus starts at Mount Sinai and ends at Mount Sinai, and there's no movement in between. In other words, if you get into like the book of, of Judges, there's a lot of movement there in this place and there in this place, and there's this war and this battle, and they're back and forth. But in Leviticus, they come in, we come into the book, they've already been at Mount Sinai. That happened in the middle of the book of Exodus for that matter. And they've been at Sinai, from the start of the book and when we end the book, they're still sitting at Mount Sinai. The people are at the base of the mountain and Moses is up top. They don't know how long it's gonna be. This is a future projection. God is saying, when you come into the land, this is what I want you to do. This was not something that man concocted and said, oh, well, let's try to do this. This was God's command and saying, when you get into the land, I want you to do this. And now I want you to really think about the practical for a moment. How hard would this have been to take an entire year and not sow any seeds, not gather any harvest, no gathering, no pruning, no causing things to grow? I've got a couple of peach trees in my front yard. And uh, last year, they were so overfilled with peaches that they were laying over on the ground, just way too full of peaches. There were so many of them. But then this past summer, I didn't know what to do with them. I just left them. I just left the trees. This past summer, they bloomed. They were beautiful in the spring. They, they just turned into this white and pinky color, and, and they're beautiful looking. And they had all kinds of leaves on them, but not one peach. 
Not one. I asked some friends of mine who have peach trees. I said, well, I don't understand. What did I do wrong? I didn't do anything. I didn't spray them with anything. I didn't do anything. Why did the peach trees not produce any peaches? And the answer that was given to me was this. You didn't prune them. Pruning promotes growth. And so they said, you didn't prune the trees. That's why they didn't, they didn't produce anything. The apparently peaches only produce off of the first and second year limbs. But after the second year, they, they won't produce anything off of that limb in, in the third year. Well, I didn't know that. So n- next year I need to prune my trees and that pruning will promote growth. By the way, just let that sink in. You can use that line often. Pruning promotes growth. Let, let, think about that on a spiritual level pruning, promoting growth. Well, God is telling the Israelite people, don't prune it. For this year, no pruning. Don't do anything that would promote the growth. Whatever comes up, you're just going to have to trust that whatever comes up, that it just comes up. If I'm going to eat something that's out of the field, I'm eating it because it came up and it's out in the field and I went and I picked it and I ate it right then and there, but I'm not going to gather it up. I'm not going to can it. I'm not going to preserve it. I'm not going to store it. None of that. We're going to trust day by day that God is going to provide. Now, this is another one of those interesting factors. We can't find a whole lot of this in the Bible. We can't find them practicing. I can't go into the Old Testament and give you a story and say, oh, here's a year of rest for the land in such and such time. We can find some references to things they were not doing. And we can find, as we get into the year of Jubilee, we can find something maybe kind of similar to that in the book of Nehemiah. But the honest truth is we don't really see the Jewish people practicing this. Now, we know today that they do some things that some of the some Jewish uh, landowners would do things today to kind of circumvent this, in my opinion, some of them being that they would take one sixth of the land and not work on that for that year. So they would only work on six sevenths of the land. And so a little bit of the land every year. So this year, a little bit, next year, a little bit gets left out. Next year, a little bit gets left out until on the seventh year, all of the land has rested for one year in that time. But that's really circumventing. Another thing that uh, was known in Jewish history to do for Jewish landowners was to hire a Gentile, hire somebody who was a non-Jew to work the land in the, the off year. And then they would say, well, but it wasn't my land in that year. But still, not a good practice. And I'll tell you why. Because God said that it's a Sabbath rest for the land. The land is getting the Sabbath rest. It's not just that you're not working it, but it's that the land is getting the rest as well. And really, the point is this. They were to rely fully on God. Now, here's the lesson. Are you ready? If you've missed everything else, you're eight minutes into this video. So check this out. Rest is found inside of trust. Rest is found inside of trust. I would contend with you that many times we cannot find rest because deep down we don't actually trust. Maybe I'm speaking to myself. Maybe you don't find that same thing. But I find that rest is found when I can actually trust that God will do what he promised he would do. I'm not going to get to it today. I'm not even going to bring you to it. And you could read for yourself if you want. A little further in chapter 25, we will read as God says, how are you going to get food in those years? And he says, I'm going to I'm going to provide for you in the sixth year enough that in the seventh year, you'll be able to be taken care of. See, all of this is preparatory. They are supposed to plan to rest in him by fully trusting that God's going to provide in the sixth year. And then anything that comes up, they're not going to gather it if the grapes produce more grapes in the in the off year, they're not going to go out and go gather bushels of that up. They're not going to do it that way. Not in that year, because that year is a year to just trust. Friends, I'm going to ask you this question as I close the video. Do you trust God that much that you can take your hands off and say, you know what? I'm just going to trust the Lord. I think many times I found myself, I'm speaking of me, I find myself in prayer and I bring something and I lay it at God's feet and I say, God, please take care of it. I can't handle it. And then as I get up off my knees from prayer, I gather all that stuff up and I take it with me. God wants you to leave it at his feet and to trust him because he is good and he will take care of us. He will provide. Will we trust him to do exactly that? All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you'll come back tomorrow as I get a little further into Leviticus chapter 25. And yes, I really hope to get back here tomorrow. So I'll see you then.